Hey everybody, this is Kasu, and welcome to more Kaiju Part 3. But before I start, I hope you guys actually enjoyed the previous video that I sent uh, a few days ago, uh, which is on the Path of Titans journey for a Miragaya. And if you do, if you guys do like more of those kind of videos, uh, do let me know so I can make more of it. And also I'll see the result of the video, because it took me quite some time to actually make it. But Back to more Kaiju part 3. Today we'll be going through 5 creatures. I'm pretty sure it's 5 creatures. However, each of these 5 creatures have some or quite a lot of variants. So I'll be going through each of them. Or rather showcasing each of them too. Without further ado, let's begin. Starting with this guy. Fenra, Devourer of the Gods. As you can tell, it is basically Fenra from Norse Mythology. It does have a bio, so I'm going to read it out to you now. Not much is known about Fenrir, outside of the fact he was a giant canine-like titan with smaller canine-like mini kaijus in his pack. It is mentioned by Kaitan that Fenrir considered his pack his kin, and was greatly angered when one would be killed, even going as far as threatening to no longer participate in the war due to the losses of his pack. Although threats from Kronos convinced him to remain. Before the Plague Titan War, Fenrir was rivals with the titan Artemis, doesn't make sense, whom they competed over territory. One day, Artemis pack slew one of Fenrir's. In a rage, Fenrir and his pack descended upon the other titan, and Fenrir emerged victorious. The result of this battle caused him to obtain the hatred of the titanus brother Apollo, while Fenrir too slew in battle, or who Fenrir too slew in battle, earning his nickname Devourer of the Gods. So, as you can tell, it's not really Fenrir, Fenrir, but it does, it's kind of reminiscent. Right now it hasn't come yet, so yeah, let's chill with that. So, it's, let's go for, let's go through each of his abilities. I'm gonna summon a sauropod for easy targeting. Ah, uh, that's a spoiler. So, his first ability is his left click attack. That adds a buff that increases damages by 10% each time, and it stacks up to 20. And basically, it inflicts infected wound. And as you can tell, my bike is getting... More and more painful, and the stacks just gets higher and higher. So yeah, it is a, and it's uh, yeah, it's capped out at maybe two times the damage. So yeah, it's pretty pretty useful. Now, right click is how it summons a pack of fallen wolves at same level as him to fight. Maximum of twenty minions, and also summons a maximum of four larger, more powerful minions prioritized. There you go. And if I'm not wrong, the infected wounds does affect the pack. So yeah, it's it's it is pretty deadly. For the sheer fact that it just brushes people. Now, C key is a jumping bite. Don't know how this will work. Yep, it's a pounce that will deal kaiju bleed too. And as you can tell, the your minions do inflict infected wounds. So you don't you yourself don't have to want to inflict it, your minions can be the one to inflict it. Now X key is to grab smaller creatures. I'm pretty sure you can grab allies, right? Or not. Yeah, there's a Listro saw here. I mean then again, everything to him is smaller since it's so huge. Let's try that. Okay, I have no idea why it's not picking up the creature. Because it's not in my mouth. So yeah, I'm not very sure about that. Our left control is Sniff, which basically works like a dire wolf. Now, right control is an ice breath attack. Which is Oh right control, sorry, not right click, right control is an ice breath attack. Like so. And it applies freezing similar to I don't know, a lot of creatures actually. Now up next is Shift X, which is a thrash attack. This thrashes the carry target and damages them only. Inflicts 4 to 5 times the and deals base 25 damage. Ad additionally, it stacks the Bite Fury buff as well. Inflicts infected wound multiple times. 50 base stamina to activate. Drains 25 stamina each time and has a slight cooldown. Not very sure how to show you guys that because uh, I can't pick shit up for some reason. Like I can damage them but I can't pick them up for some reason. No way. So yeah, I'm not sure but I can show you the animation though. Let me try it. I can't show you the animation because I can't show anything. What the hell. 
Oh, that, that's the bite, sorry. Ignoring that, let's use Q, which is an ice AoE attack. Oh, okay. That was a bit weird. Uh, this particular attack inflicts uh, freeze and slow target while spawning icicles around itself to increase the damage. So maybe I have to fight, fight it first, then let's try again. Oh, there you go, the, ic the icicles that spawn from the ground. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Right? Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Not biased at all. So yeah, from this of it, his uh, strongest attack is actually the how to summon his uh, well, his lackeys. And unfortunately, the lackeys will, as long as your lackeys is alive and like you know around, you can't really summon them again. Now, uh, let's lower down the volume a little bit, or rather, let's destroy all wild dinos. And I'll teach you, rather, than, I'll read you guys the additional notes. This creature is classified as a boss, immune to all status effect bosses are normally immune to. A solid middle ground kaiju. The AoE buff has a very large AoE. Fenrir will passively buff all wolf and dog-like creatures in a large area around him. No idea what do other dog-like creatures there are. Increasing their resistance and damage on allied creatures and it also increases their stamina regen slightly. Fenrir is immune to ice-based debuffs and damage. And yeah, that's it. That's it for Fenrir who came from Norse mythology and so on and so forth. Now, next up is less of a uh, less of a creature to tame, but more of a creature to fight. I'm gonna spawn her, but basically this is Typhoon the Everworm. I'm gonna spawn it first, and I'll show it to you guys. So yeah, this is Typhoon, the Ancient Everworm. Uh, more likely or not, this is a boss rather than a creature for you to tame. And from the looks of it, he can't really move around very well. I mean, he is moving slightly, but he can't really move around very well. So even if you see him, don't worry, he won't really chase you to the end of the world. Unlike other creatures in this mod. However, uh, I am going to read you his offer. Biography An ancient primordial being that rivals Kaitan in age. After the first Titan War, a badly damaged Yggdrasil and Gaia slumbered for years to regain their strength. But a strange Titan from the Earth came upon the helpless Yggdrasil and devoured him. Gaia was unaware of who slew her brother but angrily was determined to find and kill whoever it was. Of course, she never got the chance. In the beginning of To Walk with the Ancient Ones, Typhoon mutated from Yggdrasil's power and emerged under a city, nearly crushing it. But Kaitan was awoken from the worm's cries and swiftly delivered it a humiliating death shortly after. So yeah, this is the... God damn, he's loud, but this is uh, Typhoon, the Ancient Everworm. His looks looks a bit like a certain monster in Monster Hunter, not gonna lie. You know, with the whole face and stuff like that. However, let's kill him and see what we get. Well, killing him doesn't kill his minions, so you guys have to wipe out the minions too, unfortunately. And let's see the rewards. The rewards is basically 80 elements and 1 Typhoon Law. Uh, okay, the law reads as... The Land Kraken, Scorn or Typhoon, a colossal beast who lay under the ground. Where the world used his position to rupture, where the wood used his position to rupture and liquidize the earth under his opponent's feet, making it impossible to properly take off or escape or even fight back, before dragging his victim underground. A long time ago, when Gaia's brother Yggdrasil decided to enter a slumber, rooting himself to the earth, Typhoon, much smaller at the time, wrapped around the slumbering titan and consumed him. The worm accidentally fell into a deep slumber while digesting the tree and grew to enormous sizes during that time. Uh, so yeah, that's his law, I guess. 
if you guys are curious. But yeah, that's that's basically uh Typhoon the Everworld. I can't really tame it, so all his attacks are very random. I can't really show all of it. And even his uh side notes are not very interesting, so let's go on to the next one. Okay, up next is um yeah, this flashy fucker, and as you can tell, it's very familiar. Very, very familiar indeed. This is Gojiran. I wonder what it's referencing. And this is his uh, biography. A young member of an ancient, powerful titan species, Kakinos is the last of his kind, with all other members being wiped out by Gaia for siding with Kaitan. A morning Kaitan discovered clutches of his species' egg and swore to repay the species for their hospitality by raising their last children, but only one egg would ever hatch. Kakinos, what, is one of the only characters who Kaitan shows a kinder, more gentle side to, and as a result, Kakinos often refers to the White Death fondly as Uncle Kaitan. This is nothing to do with Gojiran, but I'm gonna continue because there's another bio for Kaitan. The second Titan god, Kaitan, was once feared amongst the titans as a god of death. Despite being the supposed rival to his older brother Kaijin, the most powerful god, Kaitan was the weakest of all the gods with the exception of Yggdrasil, causing him to be mocked in the shadows by the very ones who worshipped him. Kaitan and Kaijin were created by the god serpent to be direct contradictions to each other. Ka Kaijin would, being the good dragon and Kaitan being forced forced into the role of the evil dragon. However, despite Kaitan's violent nature and repeated attempts to kill him, Kaijin loves his brother very much, dearly, sorry, and would do everything he would try and redeem him, much to the displeasure of the god serpent in the background, and despite being literally programmed to hate his older brother, Kaijin would eventually become the first and one of the few characters that Kaitan grew to care about. No idea what this has to do with Gojiran, but let's see his ability, because it's quite stacked. So, uh, well, his walking is a bit, like, you know, weird. His swimming, on the other hand, looks great, actually. Yeah, swimming looks great, but his, uh, walking is a bit static. Yeah. But let's, uh, see his ability, because that's what we're all here about. So, his left click is a punch or claw attack. Where did that guy go? Yeah, left click is a punch or claw attack. Which doesn't do much. Or rather it does quite a lot, but it doesn't do any status effect. Right click is a raw for intimidation, but does not draw aggro. Yeah, I wonder what that raw sounds like. C key is a stomp attack. Which just does stomp and also inflicts cripple. Shift X is a claw attack that hits 5 times. As you can tell, it heals bleeding too. Control X is a two handed slam attack, so let's try it out. Okay, most of his stuff actually deals quite a lot of damage to be honest. Shift Control is a tail swipe. There you go. And it looks like actually it will follow up because it will do two hits, I guess. Like so, and slam. Yep, so it does do damage twice. And for most of it, it will actually turn the, the beast around. Now, right control is a triple punch attack, which uh, looks like this. Okay, that was very human. Now, Shift Q is an atomic taunt which inflicts terrifying all creatures and heavily crippling their damage and increase the damage taken immensely. So let's try that. Shift Q. Oh, okay. Yeah, it inflicts terrifying on the creature. Which, yep, it deals, I now deal more damage to it. Now, Alternate Q is the Atomic Breath. Again, I don't know where it's coming from. It inflicts and flame which seals away 20% of the max health for 10 seconds. Which I need to find something else to kill because this guy's in the water. Okay, Alternate Q.
Yeah, it's gonna tell it's pretty deadly. And it does have a long wind up, but it's, you know, it's worth it for how much damage it does. Now, Oki, which I'm gonna summon another creature for, Oki is Atomic Pulse, which inflicts burn, huge damage, and AoE, and enormous attack. Yeah, as you can tell, like everything around me died. Everything hurts. Or everything is hurt. Now, shift right control is uh, hollow earth blast. Again, this is they're not they're not making they're making this not very not obvious on what this is referring to. But and I don't know how Toho feel about this, but let's try it. So it's shift right control. Okay, that was very, very extra, but okay, that was quite awesome actually, not gonna lie. Okay, that was the Hollow of Blast. Uh, there's a bit of a description for it. Uh, it rapidly deals damage, inflicts a shorter variant of the Irritation debuff, but it deals more, a bit more damage quicker as well as draining a bit more stamina and making you do much less damage, take much more. No idea what that means. Gains a huge armor while using this attack. Uh, a lot of the other titans like Utolong, Okeanos, o Typh Typhoon, Behemoth, Gaia, and Kaitan, and Gojira takes 25% reduced damage from this attack. So this attack not, isn't, isn't really good against titans I guess, but it's good against a lot of other stuff. Now, shift right control is a Dragon's Blast. It charges up two Dragon Blasts which are hard to aim. First one shoots further and the second one nearer, inflicts stun and deals damage. Deals high damage, then shoots 3 more rapidly for spread area damage. I am just going to summon another poor sauropod to try this one. Right, now shift right control. Ah, uh, doesn't seem to be working. I can't. Shift right control. Yeah, I can't seem to make it work. Apparently, maybe it's not working. But. Probably. Uh, our key is Atomic Breath. Which is not working either. So, yeah, I think the last two abilities is either removed or not in the game anymore. And yeah, I think I, I, think I can uh, almost end it for this guy. However, he does have a small little amount of uh, notes. It is classified as a boss. It is immune to all oh my god the lag to all vanilla game debuffs not sure about modern ones as well as the buffs that are childed from the defaulted default arc buff bases uh you guys have to know what childed means is basically they are similar and it's one of the more powerful kaiju and yeah that's it for this very big very familiar guy called gojira name his name is familiar all right on to the next feature now up next is this one xenonia the Hive Queen. I don't know why this one is called Sophia. It will spawn with, you know, Sophia. Oh my god. Oh! Oh wow, that is a... There's a description there that I didn't see before. Even the drawings of a woman. That's kind of creepy. Uh, so it was once a human named Sophia. Uh, Xenonia was turned into a Kaiju from a field experiment when a classified organization attempted to communicate with corrupted Kaiju by injecting her with element. So yeah, that is her bio. Her bio is not written in the... Uh, I guess the wiki page. So yeah, it's a 
pretty tragic story, but let's take a look at his abilities. So for his left quick attack, uh, is a bite, which inflicts a Dino Nikers bleed and it damage and it can damage up to metal structures. And from the looks of it, that Dino Nikers bleed was a lie. Now right click is a tail swipe. And it's basically very similar to the what's that? The, to that creature in Aberration, I can't, the Reaper, the Reaper. Yeah. Shift X is Tail Impale, which does that. Holy shit, that does a lot of things. Uh how, how do I? Okay, so this. Oh god, it's bloody everywhere. Uh, let's. Try that again. One hour later. Okay, I have no idea how to hit the impale again, but just now as you saw, uh, it deals a lot of status effect that are bleed related, and it looks pretty strong. Except that it's very hard to hit. I've been trying it for like the past the past five times. All right, up next is left control, which is a borrow. And while ball road, uh, you can move around pretty fast, and you can have those kind of heat signature scanning thing of magic. But while ball road, you can press right control to summon minions. But and you yourself will emerge too. So let's see how these minions work. Um, swing and hit me. I dare you. So these minions ranges from Xenonian warriors to Xenonian something else. Well, I think all of them are warriors. Come oh, hit us. Alright. And as you can tell, it's uh... Very scary. You see a bunch of these guys running at you. Well, yeah, so this is another creature that can summon minions too. Right control while, you know, on not borrowed will make a roar. Which has another very familiar raw. Please stop using this raw. Uh, C key is also a raw. Well, X key is also another raw. Uh, this, this, one, this one's cooler. This one's cooler. Now, Q key is Topper Spikes, which launches a barrage of Reaper Queen spikes from her mouth. Yep, a barrage indeed. Holy shit, you are bumps. <laughs> yeah, god damn, there's a lot of buffs debuff. But yeah, that, that's the that, that's the Xenobias. Oh my god, it's just jumping at they all just jumped at it like a pack of rabbit animals. Well, I'm gonna leave them to it. Now, our key is webbing apparently, which doesn't work. As I'm pressing R right now, it doesn't work. Okay. And a last of its ability is the space bar. While holding space, you can charge a jump. And while charging, you can also utilize all attacks but the borrow and tail attack. So you can still bite and stuff like that. And this is to make it so that you, since you're crouched on the ground, you can actually hit creatures that are smaller or like lower to the ground. But let's see how far you can jump. Again, you jump high but you don't jump far. And now let's go through his notes, or her notes, because there's a bunch of it. It's classified as a boss, immune to all status effects, bosses normally immune to, can jump, yeah no shit you told us. Reflects back damage onto her opponents as cocoon damage, meaning it prevents them from flying. Her minions reflect damage as Dilo poison, slowing you down and blinding you. Xenonian warriors possess a very powerful self-destruct attack they rarely use, deals Massive 400 damage and stuns themselves. If they have over 85% of their max HP remaining, they survive. They may survive. Otherwise, they lose 85% of their max HP and die. Their self-destruct inflicts cocoon. Xenonian Pratons, which is one of their uh one of the other minions that she can summon, are basically the same but lack the ability to self-destruct. Instead, they shoot barrage of cocooning projectiles. Xenonia has the faster summoning ability of all kaiju, but very low base HP, use her more strategically rather than up close for combat, as she is much weaker physically as well, but she is very agile. Her and her minions have decently high da damage resistance. Minions have around 55% damage reduction and Xenonia has around 75%. So yeah, that's a mouthful, but yeah, that's it for 
Xenonia. Up next is a bunch of creatures, not this one here, that I'll go through it later, but these guys, these five, called the Sasorasu. Let me read out the description to you. One of the lesser titans, similar to Gigamoth, but far more violent. That's not to say they aren't containable, as they are still akin to wild animals. Although adult Sasso Rasu, like the primordials, are too much to handle in captivity. It is noted that Horus considers young Sasso Rasu a delicacy. Oh my god. And it appears Kaitan and Kakinos have consumed their fair share of these titans, so these are food apparently. Sasso Rasu possess thick spiked carapaces that protect them from attacks aimed at them from above. Sasorasu are very skilled borrowers, so much so that Sasorasu are contained in a Titan research facilities have to have their claws restrained to prevent them from borrowing through the floor. These guys come in five different variants, which is uh, Albino, Primordial, Molten, Glacial, and Original Sasorasu. Now, let's take a look at his abilities. Got them, this is a cool ass scorpion to be honest. It's a cool design for a scorpion. So, left click is a double claw pinch. Yep, so it does use that amount. And it also deals Kaiju Bleed. One more thing to note, this particular attack deals 5 times the damage against rock golems. Right click is a tail stinger attack, which inflicts bleeding and this guy does I got rudely interrupted. Alright, uh, let's see the right click again, which inflicts bleed, as shown here. X key is a projectile shooting based on the variant. So, with the rock variant, you shoot rocks in a shotgun format. Now let's move you. Oh, got them. And, oh god, so you can see all of them are shooting their own projectiles. Um, you can stop it now, please. Holy shit, never mind. Alright, let's go with the albino one because uh, the rest of them are very annoying to deal with. So, yeah, all of these are the variants for the Sasorasu or the Giant Scorpion. I'm calling it the Giant Scorpion, it's easier. Then, uh, they have a. The notes, side, the side notes that they have is longer than the bio, so I'm gonna read through all of it. Probably to tell you the differences between the variants. Different variants vary in different types of situation. Rock variant is immune to wyvern breaths. Ice variant is also immune to ice wyvern breath, but no longer immune to other wyvern breaths, though has heavy resistance against all of them. Possesses a weakness towards all sources of fire damage. Is immune to freezing and also protects riders from heat, but may cause them to get too cold. Fire variant, TLDR is literally the opposite but uh, their projectiles have the high highest dps potential dps albino variant is the same as the rock variant but possesses slightly higher base damage the primordial variant is the boss like variant it has a much higher base health damage and is immune to almost all wyvern breaths except the crystal owls one it possesses great power and is classified as a boss but has a weakness towards explosion it possesses immunity knockback the Crystal variant is another boss. It is smaller than the Primordial, but larger than the others. It takes it to a whole nother level and is immune to Crystal Wyvern Breaths too, and it too possesses immunity to knockback. It is untamable, but poops out Crystal when killed it with high amounts of resource specific crystals. What? Sorry, let me say that again. It is untamable, but poops out Crystals. When killed, it will drop higher amounts of resources, specifically crystals, compared to the other variants. This variant spits cocoon, corrupted cocoon blast and has multiple stinging attacks. In execution, bleed, stun, did not guess bleed, slow, and even acid burn. Oh my god, that's a lot of status. All variants only take 30% of incoming damage, but also takes normal amounts from explosion and other sources. Though they can also get saddles with 60 armor with primordials being slightly higher, which will protect them. Ironically, despite easily killing rock golems and with their bleed and armor, rubble golems possess different damage types than rock golems. Rubble golems attack are all explosion damage types, meaning any rubble golems can easily kill Sasoru of lower level which lacks a saddle. Primordial Sasoru still has enough HP to tank through it though. 
Some sort of rules are passive until attacked. They should not be taken lightly, though some of their higher tier kaiju in this mod easily outmatches them, especially since some of them possess explosion damage type attacks. So yeah, that's the whole oh my god, that's the mouthful from for the Sasorasu. A giant scorpion, which honestly I think fits in normal arc, to be very honest, if it's like a boss or something. Now, lastly for this mod showcase is Aku Kirai. My god, your name is complicated as hell. It has a bio, so they read it up to you. Once a mated pair, Akokirai's mate was slain and consumed by Kaitan, leading to a to her resentment of him. The species appears to be able to carry fertilized eggs for millions of years and eggs are still capable of hatching. Due to her enormous size, Akokirai radiates steam from her body, which can detonate with the force of a thermonuclear bomb. Akokirai was a titan that was seen scarcely by ancient civilization, who dubbed it the demonic dragon due to her physical appearance. During that time, she laid her eggs while, which hatched into her children. Both her and her children fell into hibernation, but were ultimately awoken by Typhoon's rampage. A fierce defender of her children, Akokirai obliterates anything that enters her territory. Strong enough to match an H Kaitan in strength and display incredible durability against him and Utolong, Akikura is easily one of the strongest kaiju mankind has ever seen. So yeah, let's take a look at his uh, abilities, at her abilities. So, first up is his left leg attack, which is a bite, which covers a lot of materials, but in terms of damage wise, it's not really useful. Right click is Claw Crush. Let's see what it does first. It does Gashed. And it has a high knockback. And also deals very high damage. But the animation is 5 to 6 seconds long. So yeah, it's pretty slow. C key is a hitbutt attack. Which, you know, is just a hit, standard hitbutt attack. Like so. X key is a stomp attack. Which I guess I need to be closer in order for it to work. I want Storm. Okay, yeah, you have to be very close for it to work. Left Control is a raw that hits multiple times and has high knockback and also stuns enemies, so let's take a look. Yeah, that's a. And honestly, that's it for Akuki, right? There's not much. Like, no breath attack, no nothing. It's just a very physical creature that doesn't even use his tail to attack for some reason. That's all her abilities. Uh, it does have a bunch of side notes though. Well, not very long, but I'm gonna read out to you nonetheless. It is immune to fire debuffs, but fire damage will hurt it the same. Uses same saddle as Gojiran. Really freaking fast in the water too. Okay, I guess it's fast. I'm not sure about the water. The game is lagging. Yup, okay, yeah, in the water is pretty decent and fast are passive until they are attacked, in which case they will attack viciously. Honestly, despite the threatening appearance and impressive sounding stats, they are surprisingly weak and balanced for vanilla arc. Base health comparable to unnerved Bronto and damage comparable to a tame Giga. Though levels and health are much better and damage are much better than the Giga, not immune to knockback but has a high resistance to it. Also has immunity to some other debuffs. Against creatures with no immunity to Knock back, you can use the rod to knock them back and then claw them for bleed. And takes a 70% less damage from stone damage type attacks. From the looks of it, it feels like... I don't know, she's a bit inspired by... I guess, Diabolos from Monster Hunter. And yeah, with that, I've come to the end of this mod showcase. And yeah, this... Again, a lot of these are either folklore or, you know, straight up from another more popular franchise <coughs> Toho Beast of Zulu <coughs> and yeah that's it for this mod review I will be back next week with a, another mod review for this and we're coming to the end of it probably there's like I think 11 more creatures which I'm gonna go through all of it and ho hopefully by then I can find another mod to showcase if you guys have any mod that you want me to showcase please put it down in the description below and with that this has been Kasu and I hope to see all of you in the next video or stream.
Bye. I'm very scared to call say ask you to say bye, but sure. Come say say say, say bye. Why is the sky weird? Oh yeah, right. This is technically not really a raw, but ah. This 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 one this one is gonna get sued if they've got found out. But yeah, bye.